We ready to go, everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I will uh, call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, January 25th, 2021, 4 30 p.m. to order. Um, would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance the to the flag, flag. flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everybody. Our first order of um, business tonight is uh, just to remember our friend Bill Hubert. He was uh, well loved in town and a and a well known figure. Um, I would ask for a moment of silence in his memory and to think of his family, please. Thank you, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Brian, do we have anything for open forum? Did we receive any? We had uh, one oh, request. Oh, well, emails. Yeah, we had one request from a citizen who would like to be heard when we do the liquor uh, uh, license for uh, Johnny Macaroni's. Okay. And I saw also Nancy Hill has her finger up. Okay. Nancy? Uh, thank you. I just wanted to publicly thank Viking Pizza for their donation of 95 uh, pizzas for our grab and go last Thursday. They also uh, were kind enough to donate um, 95 gift certificates for an additional large cheese pizza. Um, they certainly made a lot of people happy that day. So I just wanted to publicly thank them. That's great. Thank you. They're a, uh, they're a great partner and uh, help out with a lot of charities. And I saw some of those pizzas on Facebook. They look terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Made me want a pizza. <laughs> uh, Maybe right. that will open the door for some other uh, establishments to do the same. What a great idea. <laughs> Not that we wouldn't put pressure on them, but. We would be happy to be the recipient of that. <laughs> we'll spread the word. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else for open forum? All right. Not seeing anybody. I will close open forum. And um, we're going to skip over our um, hearings because that's not till five o'clock. So we'll go right to our action items if you're ready. Mr. Clark. Uh, approve the minutes of January 4th, 2021, 5 p.m. Board of Selectmen's meeting. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, before we go to the next action item, I see Hillary here, but I don't see Nadia Clancy here yet. So let's skip. She, she did confirm she received the invitation, oh, but I think she is. Oh, there she is. <laughs> there she is. Coming just in time. <laughs> Nadia, we were just getting to your action item, so you are just in time. So back to you, Mr. Spagone. Action item two, approve the proclamation for the com uh, Community Coalition for Change. Second. All right, in um, terms of discussion, I'm gonna ask Nadia to speak. Um, I just wanna say this has been um, something that I started working with Nadia on back at the end, beginning of last summer, I think. Um, and we have had many, many iterations <laughs> of this proclamation and meetings. We have worked with the schools, and I believe they will be adopting something very similar, um, if not exactly the same as this. Um, so I want to thank Nadia and the Community Coalition for Change for their time and input in, in getting this document um, ready for prime time, as we say. So Nadia, did you want to add something? Hi, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Nadia Clancy. I am an activist and a leader in the Community Coalition for Change um, in East Bridgewater. I am a mother of four. Um, our grassroots organization is called Community Coalition for Change, which was created, um, as Carol mentioned, back in June. We held our rally at the Town Common. Um, it was um, created because um, there was racial incidences at the schools. 
concerned parents such as myself, Hillary Lovell and Gisela um, formed this organization. We came together um, to be a resource for the school and the community. Community Coalition for Change is committed in engaging in meaningful action in addressing inclusion. Adopting this proclamation is taking action and celebrating a pro, uh, in a way, in a proactive way, to think about inclusion in settings, including employment, education, and innovation. This town proclamation is the basic understanding of how to function with kindness and respect in, increasing, in an increasingly diverse society. As such, we are in favor of this proclamation. Thank you. Um, any further discussion from my board members? <clears throat> no, I think it was put together very well. Yeah, I agree with Dave. I think the timing that was uh, put into it and the work was uh, was exquisite and uh, enjoyed. But I, I, you know, I promised Nadia that this wouldn't be something we would stick in a drawer and forget about, but that we would use it for, you know, training and to help us set a path for how we move forward as a community and how we treat each other in, in East Bridgewater. So if there's no further discussion, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 There we go. Nadia, it only took eight months and three minutes. <laughs> I really appreciate all everyone involved. Like I said, this was a very tedious process. All everyone got on board. Um, Mr. Noble, um, Carol, from the onset, like I said, you've been an ally in regards to trying to get this um, to be a final in front of everybody. And I believe um, the chief of police as well, Mr. O'Brien, I would like to say thank you as well for chipping in and, and putting your um, you know, reviewing the proclamation, Mr. Spagone as well. Thank you so much. Uh, if I, oh, Mr. Sheedy, how you doing? Um, just want to say oh, thank you as you. well um, for also allowing other departments heads to take a look at the proclamation and um, mm -hmm. disputing it along the town um, administrators. So again, this is um, something that um, Carol and I and Community, Co Co Community Coalition for Change, sorry, I'd like to just make it CCC, just easier to say, um, to get this uh, a starting point to make our town uh, more inclusive. So again, I, I do appreciate all the efforts, everybody involved, um, especially to our members, community um, coalition members, they um, really, you know, um, wanted this and they they wanted you guys to understand that they appreciate, they love um, living in East Bridgewater, they want the town to be welcoming. So this is the reasons why we, we wanted to make sure that this um, was adopted. And, and um, so I'm just excited. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thank you to you and, and your committee members that are here. We appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great. All right. Thank you. Back to our action items. Mr. Spagone. There you are. I couldn't uh, find you on my screen. <laughs> I know I'm missing some people too, but uh, let's see. To uh, number three is accept the recommendation to award the general contract to Titan Roofing Inc. as the low responsible bidder for the Central School Roof Project. Second. Any discussion on this? No. Nope. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Approve the firefighters, paramedics, and the firefighter EMTs employed by the East Bridgewater Fire Department to give vaccines to anyone who is not a first responder. Second. Any discussion? Chief Hiron, do you want to add anything? I know you sent us a letter, but is there anything you wanted to say publicly? It's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Is, is Chief Heron speechless? I, I have never seen Chief Heron speechless before. But Can we get that front page of the Enterprise? Maybe he's just scared of the needles. <laughs> well, Chief, I, I do want to. Go ahead. My computer's running really slow today. Sorry. No. In order for um, the fire for the paramedics and EMTs and the fire department to be able to give vaccinations to anybody other than first responders, we had to... Um, get approval from the board in order to do that. Um, so moving forward, if you 
prove that moving forward, we'll be able to, you know, participate in vaccination cl clinics, whether or not they're sponsored by the Board of Health or sponsored by the fire department. Excellent. Thank you so much for getting your people trained to do this and for the, the number of vaccinations you gave out last week. I'm very grateful that our first responders and others have been vaccinated. And, you know, you, I'm ready for mine. So It's coming. <laughs> Can't wait. Yes, Rebecca? Um, I don't, Peter, did you give a floor to accept the um, agreement yes. between I was just going to mention that we we missed number four. Okay, we just want to miss that one. The roofing? Oh, there's another roofing. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. So yeah. we'll go back to that then. Yeah. We'll, we'll circle back to that. We'll finish the two chief, two requests yeah. from the chief. Thank you for catching that. All right. Any further discussion on um, approving the um, firefighters and EMTs to give vaccines to anyone nope. else? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, approve the request. From, approve the request from the fire chief Tim Heron for the quarterly ambulance billing abatements as of December 2020 in the amount of fifty-one thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars and seventy-seven cents. Second. Any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, heading back, Woods here approved the agreement between the Town of East Bridgewater and Titan Roofing, Inc. for the Central School Roof Project. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Vote to reauthorize and amend the intermissional agreement with that created the Southeastern Regional Service Group so as to extend the term of the agreement for a period of 25 years from February 1st, 2021, subject to any rights of termination or withdrawal, with all other terms of the original agreement remaining in place without change, and to authorize Brian Noble to execute any documents, documents necessary to effectuate the purposes of this vote. Second. Any discussion? Does Mr. Noble plan on being here for 25 years? <laughs> I'd like to be if you don't kill me, Dave. <laughs> You're not going to make 25. A long time. <laughs> Was that days or years? All right. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And that concludes our action items. Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. Uh, town administrator report. Oh, no, wait, there was one additional. Uh, yep. Did you get that, um, Peter, Maybe. about uh, Tim Kramer? Oh, his resignation letter? Yes. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, yeah. I would say, what, just to approve the resignation letter of Tim Kramer from the Capitol? Effective January 25th, 2021. January 25th of 2021. Yeah. Second. Any discussion? Just like to thank him for all the years he's put in, both on the finance and capital. Is uh, he's going to be missing a lot of knowledge he added to both groups. He did. There's a great uh, wealth of institutional knowledge there because of all his years in serving. So. Thank you, Tim, and uh, you will be missed. Harry, no yep. further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Now do we have all our action items, Rebecca? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, town Administrator's Report. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I've got a, just a few things for you tonight. I would like to thank Rob Ken, who applied for and received a Sustainable Materials Grant from the Department of Environmental Protection and that uh, we signed that contract and paperwork today. So we'll be receiving that money shortly. Um, I'd also like to talk to you a little bit about local receipts, our local receipts, which includes the motor vehicle excise tax and permit fees up about $81,000, which is good. Uh, however, our investment income, our fines and forfeits are, and miscellaneous fees are down about $42,000. So on the whole still up, but uh, and holding our own, I'm I'm pleased with the the local receipts number. I'm disappointed with the uh, 
the other items being down, but it's sort of to be expected, isn't it? Um, there's a little confusion. The state sent out a press release that said that the local aid would increase by 3%. What they were referring to was unrestricted local aid. It was on there before. I'm sorry? Okay. Sorry, somebody so, wasn't muted. Okay. So consequently, the unrestricted local aid in our budget is only about 200000 and, you know, 3%. Hey, we'll take it, but it's not going to solve the the whole problem uh, going forward. I would like to tell you that the finance committee is in full swing, and budgets have come in from all of the departments. Uh, and I'm I'm pleased to tell you, uh, they've all complied uh, quite nicely with the request from the finance committee of both a level funded and a level services budget. Um, and so that uh, meeting is scheduled at six o'clock tonight. Would be another finance committee meeting and they're meeting quite religiously on on monday nights um right now town hall is still closed and open by appointment only the numbers we have in east bridgewater still put us in the red but we're moving back the numbers are coming down there is improvement there is forward motion and the opening committee meets tomorrow morning and it will be my recommendation with your approval that we open the front door of town hall effective on Monday, uh, February 1st again, um, subject to, of course, numbers staying consistent and and, and projecting down. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, we have not been immune in town hall to the virus, and we've had several employees have to quarantine as a result of exposure. So, but so far, a very minimal number of cases. So we're very lucky, knock wood, on that one. Um, the engineering RFP uh, is out. It is posted on the goods and services register. We sent emails out to engineering firms today to see if we could recruit additional interest. And it is also posted on the website under a new tab on the right-hand side of the page called bids and uh, RFPs. And the important thing is to get a copy of the RFP, you do have to register your name and uh, email so if there are any addendum that come up uh, they can be forwarded to them the town planners position is also posted not only on the website but on the mass municipal association's website and i like to tell you that as of this morning we've actually already received one uh interested resume so that's a good plus and he actually followed the instructions to a t um, so that's a good sign as well I think we're going to get, a, I'm optimistic at this point that we're going to get a decent uh, pile of applications to sort through. So I think I'm I'm really excited about that possibility. I'm what's also- the, What's the close on that? Uh, open until filled. Okay, but one thing I think we have to start thinking about is putting a committee together um, to interview the potential planner for the town how many people, um, who's going to be on there, um, and, and get that set up. So when we get the applications in, you know, we have to have a committee in, uh, in force to start um, talking to these people, going through interviews, and as a board, we'll have to set up some criteria. And I think, unless I'm missing it, Mr. Noble, one of the things we're missing in that is who the planner actually reports to. Uh, in, indeed, uh, we are. Um, I would tell you at this particular point, the planner would be treated like any other department head in the non-public uh, safety sector. So they would report either to me or to perhaps if we set up the, the uh, organizational tree of the selectman so decided, he could report through the building commissioner. Um, but that would be up to the board. It would oh, report to the elected planning board? No, no. You would report. He's a is an a, an employee of the town hall, and just like the clerical union is signed by the selectmen, and they report technically to the selectmen. They work under the guidance of the board, but they work under the board of selectmen's authority. Okay. Um, also, we have prepared, and I have I have posted the town accountant's position on the town's website but I have not posted it on Indeed or on the MMA site just yet 
favoring to stall at about a week to get some separation between the applications for town planner and the applications for town accountants. Uh, we have also, with the assistance of our IT director, Ryan McGonigal, set up a new email address specifically for uh, the applications to come to. And thank you for Rebecca for thinking of that idea so that we will not miss a single application. Um, so that will post next week uh, on the MMA site. We have a little more time because Phyllis doesn't retire until July 1st. And then also to echo Mr. Sheedy's comments, we will have to come up with a protocol for interviewing and appointing as well. That is definitely, uh, certainly uh, Selectman's appointment. Um, and we will have to come up with how you want to do the protocol. If you're going to be doing the appointment, you're usually not on the screening committee because that would create some issues. So we'll discuss that uh, and make some recommendations to the board. And at the mm -hmm. next meeting, you can determine how you'd like to proceed. I I think my thought right now, um, and you know, Carol and Peter, I don't think we should put the accountant out there until we're finished with the planner. Um, so we can keep them just totally separate from each other, even with our, how our thoughts are going. Um, maybe put that off for another couple of weeks. I think that's fine as long as we don't get, but it sounds like if we've already got interest in the planning position, I don't think it'll be an issue. My only concern will be we made that statement and then we didn't get good applicants. We wouldn't want to put it off too long. But yeah, I would certainly think a couple of weeks anyway. Right. Give a little breathing room. Fine. I don't think, considering the amount of time, I'm not sure that's it's a concern. I, I'm fine stalling two weeks, no problem. I would like to get it out by, you know, first week of February so that we had time to spread the word and get a quality. Next February is next, that's next week. Right. Okay. So the second week of February. <laughs> so let me look at a calendar before I speak again. The 8th of February. Will that be okay? That sounds fine. Okay. <laughs> That's my report. Thank you. <laughs> and I think Thank you maybe very much. The, uh, maybe the board should uh, plan another meeting um, as these planner applications start coming in to uh, how we're going to uh, appoint a committee. Yep, we have a meeting scheduled for the eighth. You want to meet before then? Well, we can call it later on. Let's see how many applications we have coming in, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Any questions um, for Mr. Noble on, on his report? Uh, can we just go back to the opening, reopening of Town Hall? What are the figures we're dealing with, uh, Brian, as far as where we are? And we're only talking, we're only going to get one more report before next Monday, and that's going to be Thursday or Friday. Um, we're still in the red. We're still um, in the red. I'm, I'm just not comfortable right now with. Reopening the building while we're still sitting in the red category. Yep, I, I, get, I, you know, to uh, Carol and Peter, you know, what are your thoughts? I, who's remind me who's on the um, the committee that's meeting tomorrow? Hey, the meetings on went. Right? <clears throat> yeah, meetings went. Right. Peter, you're on that. Yeah, so I, uh, we usually meet Wednesdays. I mean, unless something changed. So I think it's not tomorrow, it's next day. Sorry about that. That's fine. So, um, yeah, I mean, each, every department has an opportunity to uh, kind of express where they're at as far as um, the COVID uh, and the pandemic. Uh, mostly a lot of the communication, obviously, is with the schools. But, um, you know, Brian does speak, uh, as well as Rebecca, regarding town hall and, and what the process is. Um, you know, we can we can certainly um, discuss it here right now, uh, what everybody's thought is, and then, you know, obviously bring it to the the uh, rest of the departments. Really, it's just, uh, I think Dave could just speak to as well. The, the department meeting, like, about COVID is really just so that everybody understands what every direction of each department is. The worst thing that happens to a lot of us, I'm sure it's happened to you guys as well as me, is somebody will come and ask you a question about, what the school's doing or what um you know another department's doing and you, you're like i don't know i have no idea what the hell they're doing so um you know this is a way of at least communicating and then maybe you know verbally giving them some information back as well so uh you know it's really a determination what we want to do uh what the board wants to do and then letting 
uh, you know, getting the input from both Brian as well as Rebecca, and then just letting the rest of the members the, from the different departments know on Wednesday what the thought process is. Uh, so I, I, you know, I uh, go back and forth between this. I mean, I know there's a missing piece with not having the town hall open. But then again, um, you know, it is a public uh, uh, safety concern. So I, I, I honestly, I could be pretty much swayed either way. Are we getting, um, Brian and Rebecca, you would probably know this um, better than, than I would or, or one of us. Are we getting pushback from citizens? Are people unhappy that town hall is closed or are they still able to get the business done that they need to get done under the current arrangement? It works currently. It is not the best option. Uh, one of the concerns, we, you know, we have met some some uh, uh, folks on the sidewalk, even, but the feeling, uh, both in talking to Sue Malloy in the Board of Health and in talking to the employees, that they feel more comfortable with glass between us, which means coming into the building, and obviously masks are required. Um, but I think, and Dave makes a very valid point that the numbers drive that decision. And when we meet on Wednesday, we'll have more input from the other departments and from the Board of Health to tell us where we are. Um, I just like the board to be prepared to go in the direction of the nod of the committee. If the committee feels it's comfortable to reopen, allow me to reopen. If they don't feel it's comfortable, allow me to stay closed. I think I'm good with that. I mean, I think too, you know, mindful that property tax bills are due on February 1st. Some people like to pay those, you know, Cash. in person. Yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah. You know, I've been saying for a year, like we're all just, I feel like we're making it up as we go along with so much of this, you know, and you, you make a decision one day and then the next day you have to change it because you have more information. Why, why don't we hold off making a, a definite decision until after Wednesday's meeting, and then Mr. Novo can contact, you know, all, and, and go from there what the numbers are saying, and again, a recommendation from the Board of Health. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Anything else for um, Mr. Noble's report? No? Okay, Rebecca, announcements or staff report? And there was an error on the next two upcoming meetings for February. We have two meetings, one February 8th and the next February 22nd. Yep. That's fine. I was looking forward to that February 25th meeting as being the only one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I don't really have anything. Um, as far as the screening committee goes for the positions of the planner in the town of Hamlet being more than happy to help, help out with that. We did it for the treasurer collector and we did it for the veterans agent. Um, so anybody that, um, you know, I, I'd be happy more to, uh, to help out with that. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's good. Um, board discussions. I'm Somebody good. Peter, uh, I have, uh, we received. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't have uh, not have a lot, but um, I did uh, two things. One is um, I wanted to discuss uh, in the past four or five years, the Board of Health has worked with the schools on um, a food drive. Uh, this year, obviously, it was, I think I talked about it back in um, October when we had it. It was a little off from the previous years because of COVID, of course. Uh, we still raised uh, quite a few items, uh, but uh, in talking to um, Ellen Oliver, who runs the uh, church on Union Street, uh, they are in dire need of uh, more products uh, going forward. They have kind of wiped out what they have. They have had support from some, some larger companies uh, that supplied them with certain uh, food goods, but that's even been dried up in some aspects because of all the uh, people that they've had or all the other food banks they've had to help. So. We have uh, put together a, uh, another drive, kind of the first time that we've done this, um, the Cans for Cupid, it's being called. Uh, it's gonna go from January, uh, February 1st through the 14th. Uh, there's a couple of places in town, the uh, uh, Dewar Slumber, uh, the Union Congressional Church, and the YMCA that will be collecting the canned goods uh, for, from the uh, patrons that come out, whether it be citizens or businesses, whatever it may be. 
uh, mon monetary donations as well. I've kind of been put in charge of that, I guess. Uh, so we'll be collecting some at the uh, insurance agency. Uh, we'll be meeting with some businesses. So I just wanted to kind of make that a, a public announcement. We have done some social media uh, posts about that, uh, but you know it's really uh, depressing to see just how dwindled not only uh, the uh, Union Church, Congressional Church, but also St. John's are with both food pantries at this time. So just want to get the word out. Uh, anyone, if anybody spread that, I'll probably bring the flyer down to Town Hall if we could maybe work it on the website somehow or do something to publicize it uh, ourselves. I think it would be of uh, a great help to both organizations to try to get, uh, get that ramped up. Great idea. And now I'm going to interrupt you before you go to your next topic of discussion because sure. it is five o'clock and we need to oh. um, get, skip. I, I can't talk. Skip to stick to the schedule. Easy for me to say um, for our hearings. So um, I will open the hearing. Peter, do you want to read the um, notice on the first one? Sure. Let's pull Thank it up you. Here. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's see what we've got here. Peter, can I assist you? Uh, I've got it. Just, just had to pull it out. So this is the um, notice is hereby given to the pursuant of the requirements of MGL Chapter 138. A public hearing will be held relative to the application for amendment. Change alteration of premises of a common vehicular all alcohol license as follows the Valerie Group, Inc., DBA, Johnny Macaroni's, 1300 Plymouth Street. Uh, manager John Valerie. He's looking to uh, a 40 by 35 outside deck was built on the east side of the building due to the inside restrictions of seating due to COVID 19 pandemic. A public hearing will be held. Remotely or um, well, I guess it is remotely um, today at uh, 5 p.m. Monday, January 25th, 2020. Thank you, Peter. Um, Mr. Val Val Valorelli, is that how you say? Valorelli. <laughs> I see that you're here. Thank you um, for joining us. And um, I guess what what do you want to tell us about this um, application and your hearing? Well, going back to last summer when we were all hit by a million restrictions for restaurants in particular with the indoor dining, we applied for and received a permit to build an outside deck as described. And we ran that deck uh, successfully all summer. And um, I guess kind of at reapplication time, I found out that um, we needed to amend the license through the ABCC. So um, here we are hoping that it's just a formality because what we did was not cheap by any means, but it kept us alive and survived through the COVID and probably will do the same again because uh, I don't think any of us think it's gonna be back to normal by summertime. Yes. So I'm here to answer any questions or concerns. And um, that's about it. Great, thank you. Um, and then, uh, Brian, the paperwork is all in order on this? The paperwork is in perfect order. Okay. And uh, Chief O'Brien, you're all set with this? You're on mute. Can you, un can you just unmute yourself, Chief? Everything's in order with that license. Great, thank you. Um, and then I think that we had a, um, an abutter who was here. Is that Mr. Shaughnessy? Yes. yes. So did, did you uh, ask? Um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I live at two two eight six Washington Street, right across from the back of Johnny Macaroni's, and I have no problem with the deck as as far as um, an extension of dining. My fear is in the future if it's used for outside entertainment or um, an extension of the bar. That, that is what I would not be in favor of. So, and, and I don't think the current owner has that intention, but I've lived there since 1988 and the establishment has changed hands several times, I mean, four or five times. 
So I, I just am fair of the future, I guess, is what I'm okay. sure. But, but as, as the intention right now, there's absolutely no problem with outside dining. Okay. Um, um, you know, Darcy, I will say that, uh, as most everybody knows, I've been in, in town for well over 20 years now at the original location. And um, we have no intention of selling in the near future. And we have had a liquor license, um, sorry, a liquor license as well as an entertainment license for all these years that you've lived behind us. And we have had inside entertainment on and off through the years. And um, I'm not going to say that I can't promise you we're not going to have outside entertainment in the future, but I can say it would be nothing more than a guitar, a guitar player or maybe a piano player or somebody with light jazz or light rock or something like that. And, and, and I understand and that. As you know, we're not open light and I will never be, I never use the one o'clock end of my license where, you know, as we, a lot of us know, we roll up the sidewalks kind of early. And uh, well, so, we, we have, that's that would be my comment on that. And, you know, Hope it helps a little bit. No, it it does. My my I guess fear is if the license is transferred or, or this changes, how is that? You know, well, that what would is be it? a different subject, I guess, for another time. I I believe, and I would defer to, to Mr. Noble if I'm wrong. But if a license is transferred or changed, then that would come before the board of selectmen, and we would have to vote to approve anything like that. So any you know concerns going forward, if if it was a different type of establishment that would that would be addressed at that time well that's comforting but i can tell you in the since 1988 this is the first notice i've got and this is the butter so so i'm not exactly confident in that process but again i have no problem with with what's going on right now i just would like to have some confidence in the future that i'm not going to get overwhelmed I'm going to kick that over to Mr. Noble now because his hand is up. That's fine. Thank you. The liquor license does require the the notification of the abutters. The entertainment license does not require that. Um, so my suggestion, Mr. Shaughnessy, would be to subscribe to the selectmen's agendas. Uh, so for in the future, the entertainment license comes up for renewal annually. Um, and if it if there was a sale and there would be a transfer of the liquor license, you would be notified of that change, and then you'd be able to say, hey, when this comes up on the entertainment license, I wish to be heard as well and register yourself so that you'll be notified of that. But it's definitely not, you should have every opportunity to be heard when that comes up, and you should receive notification should the liquor license be transferred. So that would be your notification to pay attention. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you for, um for being here and expressing your your concerns we are glad that you know you, you did that and I, and I think too um you know and the chief could answer this if you had specific questions but you know any outside entertainment is you know subject to noise um you know restrictions times all of those kinds of things so it, you know that would that would all be taken into consideration if changes were to come down down the road okay. i have Aerosmith book for this summer does that affect that <laughs> <laughs> that can go well, I like Aaron Smith, but it's a parking <laughs> oh, problem. As long as the board gets front row seats, we're all set. I'm just <laughs> jealous you can walk there. I think that's pretty great. <laughs> no, it's not all good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Point. <laughs> um, is there anything else to come before the board with regards to this hearing? I'm all set. Hearing. But no other comments. I will um, take a motion to approve um, the change. I want to close the public hearing. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You know how I love these public hearings. Um, I will close the public hearing. And now I will take a motion to approve the change. Yeah, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the change and alteration of the premises at 1300 Plymouth Street to the license. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, all right, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule. We have to wait until 5.15. I see you there, Janet Brooks, but we have to, nope, Rebecca's got her hand up. Yes? 
was just going to let Mr. Valorelli know. Uh, so now that the selectmen have given their go ahead, I'm now going to forward it to the ADCC for their approval. So they may reach out to you as well. All righty. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. So I might talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank okay. you very Thank much. You everybody. We'll Bye. see you on the deck as Bye. soon as it's warm okay. enough. Okay. <laughs> see you later, Tim. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, um, so we do have to wait until 5.15 before we go to the next hearing. So, Peter, does that give you enough time to go back to your other discussion? Talk? Yeah, just, glance, just quick. I had a, um, uh, a resident reach out to me uh, regarding a potential senior citizen discount on water bill and trash pickup. I guess Whitman uh, just did something. Uh, I just want to let the board know I'll speak to John Haynes. Obviously, it falls under... Um, his uh, jurisdiction first just to see what uh, maybe what Whitman did give us a little idea of what uh, what they moved forward and then uh, you know I, th I think this may have come up in the past just to kind of exercise the opportunity if it is there and then report back to the board at the next meeting okay I have asked um, Chris Buckley who's been working over at Whitman um, with the VSO agent over there to get the information from Whitman on what discounts they offer and how those plans were set up because I think it's both the trash and there's also something for water. The only so thing to hear back. I feel like we talked about this when we had we did a discussion last year about raising the rates, but it's certainly something that's worth you know exploring to see if it can be reconsidered. The uh, only concern that is that the funds have to create a certain amount of collection uh so you'd be shifting the cost away from the senior on to the non-senior. I can say that's fair. <laughs> I wasn't making a comment. I was just talking about the procedure and how that works. Now, is my bill in my name or is it in Dale's name? Because that might make a difference. <laughs> I said there's a lot of work to go into it. And I'm pretty sure, as Mr. Noble said, it would be a tough thing to do right about now. But unless that, and I had the same comment um, uh, at the election, can we at least take a look at it? So yep. Chris is going to get that info and we'll speak about it at a future meeting. Yep. Um, I was just going to say that um, the MMA conference was last Thursday and Friday, and it was virtual, which is not nearly as much fun as an in-person conference. But I think that they actually did a really excellent job with all of that, it wasn't like, um, you know, our Zoom meetings, it was very uh, professional and I really enjoyed the annual meeting and hearing Governor Baker speak. Um, he was asked some questions about his personal um, handling of the pandemic for him and, and how that's been. And it was, um, it, was, it was very good. I thought it was well worth um, attending. The Women Elected Municipal Officials Symposium was Reverend Liz Walker and, um, Mayor Yvonne Spicer of Framingham was was very um, uplifting. So thank you to the town for that opportunity for us to attend. So, so Carol, are you trying to say our Zoom meetings aren't professional? <laughs> the best part about the conference meetings was nobody could see you. <laughs> really, really appreciated that. <laughs> well, yeah, your pajamas on and grabbing a... <laughs> I tell you something in the morning. But it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was well done. I wasn't sure how it would be. Like I said, definitely not as much fun as in person. And uh, I look forward to going in person again when we can. But, but it was still a worthwhile use of time. Mr. So, Noble, could you, while we have a minute left, explain the credits the town gets for uh, attending these meetings? Certainly, there are several sessions that the board attended that get us insurance credit. If you go to these educational seminars, we get credits back on our insurance. Um, you know, we do a, usually a pretty good job of coordinating who goes to what, so we maximize that. Um, I'm waiting for the report back from Maya to see how many dollars we get back, but it offsets the cost of our attending. So where the Fee was lower this year because it was not in a person and didn't require an overnight stay. I'm sort of hoping we can break even. Great. Good. And it's 5.15. So, Mr. Spagone, would you 
like to read the, uh, we'll open the public hearing. Mr. Spagone, would you read the notice, please? I see Brian no. waving his head. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep myself from uh, the discussion with the commercial oh. club, have a relationship with them, uh, both uh, personally being a member as well as uh, working with them. Understood. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chairman. A public hearing will be held remotely. Um, 175 Central Street, East Bridgewater, Mass. on Monday, January 25th, 2021 at 5 p.m., 5.15. The purpose of change of manager, Commercial Club of East Bridgewater, one Nielsen Ave, Janet M. Brooks as the new manager. Thank you, Mr. Sheedy, and I see Janet Brooks is here with us. Uh, welcome, and thank you for coming in. And um, would you like to just give us the background on, on what's happening with this, please? I'm not getting you, Janet. You know, I, I can I see you're not muted, but I don't get I'm not getting any sound. Can you hear me, Don Perber? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you, Don. Okay. No. Can you um sometimes you test can you test your mic? Or maybe Brian, is there a way that she could call in? No, the prophecy. Yes, she can. Oh, there we go. Janet, say something again. Hello. Yay. There we go. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, Dawn Farbert um, retired as of December 31st, and I was hired as the new manager. Um, my prior background is I was the bar manager at the Bridgewater Citizens Club up until October of last year. Um, they eliminated the position to save money because of the pandemic um, being closed so much there in financial straits. So my job was eliminated. Um, I, I have been on a liquor license before for the Bridgewater Citizens Club. I was on the liquor license there um, from 2012 to um, 2016. Um, I have a lot of management experience. I worked for um, my past, um, I worked for Aetna Insurance for 25 years in management. Um, I have worked for Hannah Murphy Insurance as an office manager. Um, so I feel that, you know, I would be able to handle this position. Great. Thank you. Um, Dawn, did you want to add anything? No, I think Janet's a great, uh, choice for a new manager at the commercial club. I've had the opportunity to work with her over the past few weeks <clears throat> and I will be working with her a little bit more in the future. Uh, so, uh, it comes up to Janet, uh, she's going to add a lot to the club. Good, thank you. Well, we wish you the best in your retirement. Um, thank you. Hopefully it's a long and healthy one. Uh, Brian, the paperwork on this is all in order? Rebecca assures me that it is in perfect order. Do we have a caller that's looking to have a conversation? I believe that's Don. Oh, John's there. Yeah, I couldn't get my... I couldn't get any sound, so I had to go to the phone. Okay, very good. All right, so is, is anyone here to speak on the hearing other than what we've already heard? All right, in that case, I will close the hearing. I remembered. And I will um, take a motion to um, approve the change in manager at the Commercial Club of East Bridgewater. I'll make a motion to approve the change to Commercial Club of East Bridgewater. Well, Nielsen Avenue for Janet M. Brooks. And I will second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And please note that Mr. Spagone has um, recused himself from this vote. Good luck, Janet. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you. All right. Is there any other business to come before the board? Oh, Hold we'll on a second so I can get Peter back on. There we go. All right. I'm back. And he's back. We approved it. Right. Um, all right. Is there any other business to come before the club? But the club. <laughs> <laughs> I should not look at my phone and talk at the same time. Is there any other business to come before the board? Um, I should mention, so we do have an opening on the Capital Planning Committee now due to the resignation of Tim Kramer. Um, people that are interested in that should send a letter of interest to Mr. Noble. Uh, yeah, they can send it to me uh, via email, rjohnson at mistakewaterma.gov. Uh, there is an application online uh, as long as a letter of interest, and then we'll be in touch with them. Great, thank you. Maybe for our next meeting, we'll uh, again list all the vacancies that we have on the different boards. Good idea. Very good. All right, if there is no other business to come before the board, I'll take a motion to adjourn. A motion a to motion. adjourn, Madam Chair. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thanks.